Again, I repeat, I'm Damien from forexboat.com. We're going to talk like breakouts in Forex. So I started with Forex training like about 10 years ago when I started reading books and educating myself from educational sites like forexboat.com. Um, then I continued like trading on demo accounts and I took um, like place I participated uh, uh, in uh, some like a national forex trading competition in my country. I'm from Bulgaria originally, Varna town. Uh, and I got like the first place among 520 people and I was awarded with a cup and a certificate at an official center ceremony in my university, which was a good experience. They're still holding the cup in my university, so they should be proud of me. Yay. <laughs> and this is how it all started. Then I started like trading on life accounts. I took like a lot of jobs in this industry. Like I've created a lot of like maybe more than thousand blog posts on the web. So maybe you've even landed on some of my stuff on the internet. So this is how it all started. And now I'm proud to be part of the Forex Bolt team and to talk Forex with all of you guys because um, honestly, the thing that <laughs> brings me most pleasure is when I talk Forex because um, I really enjoy the the world of the global exchanges and particularly the price action trading and analysis and technical analysis stuff which um, brings me a lot of pleasure. So it's a very big pleasure for me to be with you today on my second webinar uh, with Forex Bolt. Currently I'm located in Sofia, Bulgaria. Pretty warm day today, like 25 degrees Celsius. But probably some of you are not familiar with Celsius, so this is something like maybe 75 or 76 Fahrenheit. Very warm day for April, having in mind that three days ago it was like stone cold over here. <laughs> so, but yeah, we observe this stuff lately and some kind of weather anomaly, so it's a, we're getting used to it. Uh, what else can I tell you about myself? I'm currently working on a new blog post. So it's going to be either published later today or maybe tomorrow. It's going to be about um, uh, moving averages in Forex where we're going to cover a simple moving average, exponential moving average, volume weighted moving average, and the way how you displace these moving averages and how you can trade with them like signals, crossovers, etc., etc., and a lot of useful stuff related to moving average things. So if you're a fan of moving average, stay tuned for the new blog post that is about to appear on the Forex Boat blog later today maybe or tomorrow. Of course, yeah, I, I constantly upload the blog post in the in the private Forex group which uh, most of you or maybe all of you are members over there. So if you're not a member, make sure you send a request so we can approve you and we can keep talking Forex. I encourage you to participate in this group because it's a very, very nice and unique thing to have because the best thing in Forex trading is to keep it social, to be guys together because if you don't have who to share your success with, it's pretty much like um, any other boring job out there. And uh, yeah, I strongly encourage you to participate, to upload images, screenshots, your trades and stuff, suggestions so we can discuss because I like talking about Forex and analysis a lot and I try my best to follow currencies daily. So did you guys have some good trades? Did you manage to, to trade some of the news today? Today we had some kind of a announcement we had the bank of japan press conference we had we had the interest rates in the european union that were announced at 0.00% unchanged again nothing unusual having in mind the monetary policy of the european central bank but uh, by the way this drove a lot of traffic <laughs> with the euro dollar which is a normal event so probably some of you traded some some of the opportunities on the chart and the euro dollar is bouncing in a bullish channel it's already on the upper level probably some of you saw my screenshots at, all right cock what did you trade did you did you manage to get yeah european central bank very volatile today yeah it's like a very big candle on the on the daily chart so yeah 
it was a pretty big event, you know how it's going on, but uh, we also had like the core durable goods orders in America that was released on a worse than expected uh, rate. We also had the European Central Bank press conference as well as the United States pending home sales which were like announced at a better than expected rate. Good stuff today on the Forex market. Some opportunities were tradable. By the way, today with one of the guys in the group, his name is Neil, we were talking about the British pound American dollar Forex pair that uh, created an important breakout, by the way, today. Um, breakout in bullish direction. The pair was located like in a ranging channel, like horizontal channel. You can all see that channel on the one hour chart, for example, or on the four hour chart, like going to be better and a uh, very important resistance level was, was broken so probably the pair might continue you never know everything can happen the resistance I think it was located at 1.2850 maybe so the pair shot up and we have a new high on the chart that's it then this is like a big high I believe yeah this is something like um, some like a six seven month high maybe yeah, big things happened today, so I hope you all got some kind of a tradable opportunities that you managed to create some pips from. Good stuff. Yeah, all prices too. I see that the Brent, uh, the Brent O, and in general, all prices are pretty much like shooting down today. And they're in a consistent bearish trend like since uh, the middle of April, so normal stuff. Of course, when oil moves, Canada moves as well. So these are good stuff. So let's, guys, I suggest that since it's like um, 6 o'clock and 10 minutes and we're 15 people already, we can uh, pretty much proceed with what we're here from and we can start talking some breakouts in forex trading so I'm going to um, I'm going to turn off my camera I know that I have a very very pretty face but I have to take it out from you so you have a better picture about the screen <laughs> so let's proceed with the presentation and let's start this thing right now all right you're all able to see the screen right do you see our pretty logo over there I believe you all do if you see the screen, simply type like, yes, big screen now. All right. The screen with the logo. All right. And this is our disclaimer that states that uh, Forex trading is a risky initiative. And if you are not like familiar how to do it properly, simply don't. And... Uh, it states all our stuff, our regulations and our licenses. Everything is all set over here. So let's proceed with the presentation. So the title I came up with for this webinar is one, two, three, four guide to identify real breakouts in Forex. Usually when you read blog posts on the net um, and uh, for example, when you discuss guides and step-by-step -step stuff, people name their topics like one two three guide but I decided to name my webinar one two three four guide and I have a reason for this and you're going to see this when we proceed with this presentation uh, I just wanted to confirm with you again you're seeing the screen that shows the title of the webinar that's correct right and you see the title and you see the presentation everything's fine okay cool let's go all right and this is the plan we're going to cover for today. First, I'm going to talk about what is a breakout in Forex. Probably most of you know. Then we're going to continue with important levels in breakout trading. I will briefly explain, explain about support and resistance, daily highs and lows, pivot points, psychological levels, and trend lines. Then we're going to continue with some practical examples. I will simply pop up my chart. And I will scroll through my chart showing some breakouts, real breakouts in Forex for you. 
where you can participate as well by suggesting the pair, the forex pair you want to approach, as I did on my last presentation, because I pretty much like to randomly browse into the chart and it's not something that I've scheduled in advance, so you're free to suggest the forex pairs to approach. Uh, then we'll continue with the presentation and we will discuss the size and the dimensions of the level because breakouts are different when you approach charts differently on different time frames. And then I will continue with the four signs of a real breakout. The one, two, three, four guide to identify a real breakout with price action. We'll cover the breaking candle, the creation of an edge, which is a top or a bottom, the pullback, and a test of the already broken level and the breakout through the edge which was created in point two. Then we switch with practical examples again. I will pop up the chart again. We're going to discuss some examples, some real examples on the chart and the way they can be approached. And then we're going to finish this wonderful webinar. At the end, I'm going to launch for you um, a one, two, three, four, five, uh, way to grade my webinar, so I will uh, I will encourage you to grade the way I perform from one to five at the end of the webinar, and to leave me a feedback. I will be grateful if you do this for me because it really matters to know how am I doing and how the webinar qualifies. I repeat again, the webinar is on record, so you'll be able to see it again and again and again and again for our website slash webinars. They will be over there. So now, what is a breakout in Forex? A breakout is an event where the price breaks through a predetermined level on the chart. And here I've put like a little sketch for you that I've created myself. For example, you have the price action conforming to a level. This could be a trend line, this could be a channel, this could be anything on the chart. You see that the price hops from this level, like over here, the first bottom over here and the second bottom. But suddenly the price breaks that level. What does this mean? When the price breaks a level, traders expect it to continue in the same direction. This is why breakouts create a lot of tradable opportunities on the chart and traders use breakouts to position their trades on the chart. They set entry and exit points uh, by identifying real breakouts. When a breakout appears, we expect the price to move in the same direction. Notice that this does not happen all the time, but as you all know, nothing is 100% sure in forex trading. So when you see a breakout, this might be a fake out. And we don't like fake outs. We like real breakouts that provide tradable opportunities. Fake breakouts, simply the price peaks over there through the level, and then when we open our trade in the direction of the breakout, the price returns, hits our stop loss order, and we appear with a losing trade. And this is why we will cover breakouts today, because I really want to create like a better picture for you about breakouts and to, if possible, to improve your perception about breakouts and to improve your skill to identify real breakouts from fake breakouts. So now let's discuss some important levels on the chart. I've provided this picture over you, over here for you, which shows um, the, the curved lines you see over here with the straight angles over here. These are like daily pivot points on a random chart. The yellow line is a bullish trend line that gets broken in the red circle over here. And the green horizontal line is a 61.8 Fibonacci level. So as I said, some of the important levels that you should follow for breakouts are support and resistance in Forex. A support in Forex is a level that the price approaches from above, meaning that the support level is associated with the bottoms of the price action, as you see over here on the 61.8 Fibonacci level. It acts as a support because the price approaches it from above. And as you see, it supports the price action and it sends it a couple of times in bullish direction. The bullish trend line you see over here is also a support level, but it's inclined. So it, it's, it's not a support level, but it implements supportive functions on the price action. So this is a support level. 
The resistance level is the absolute opposite. When the level is approached from the price action from below, it is a resistance level. Daily highs and lows are a level that you need to constantly follow, in my opinion, on the chart. A daily high is the highest point on the chart for a one day period. For example, the daily high on the image you see over here, the image, by the way, is from uh, April 18 to April 20, 2017, so it's a pretty fresh example. And this is the daily high of the American dollar Japanese yen forex pair, the 15 minute chart, the daily high for April 19. And as you see, the price attempts to increase again to this level, but it is unsuccessful because daily highs and lows are considered as market extremes, uh, which have significant meaning. So if this level gets broken, a daily high or a daily low, uh, there is a big chance that the price continues in the same direction. So breakouts in daily highs and lows are also important. Pivot points are levels that traders do not approach a lot and are not very familiar with them. And I understand them because uh, most of the trading platforms do not have built-in indicators like pivot points indicators, but I have downloaded my own and I have applied it to my chart and I'll show you how it works. So the pivot points are like uh, seven important levels on the chart that are built taking into consideration highs, lows and closing price of the previous day. Note the previous day I repeat again. So in order to get the pivot points for today you will have to create a calculation that involves the highs, the lows, and the close of the price action for the previous day. So the main pivot point level is called a pivot point level. <laughs> then we have three resistances above the pivot point level, and then you have three supports above the pivot point level. So the pivot point level is being calculated by taking the, the, the daily high for the previous day, then adding the daily low for the previous day, and then adding the daily close for the previous day, and dividing all these three by three. Meaning that the pivot point level, the daily pivot point level, is an average of the previous day high, low, close. Simple. And then when you have this pivot point level, you can calculate resistance one, resistance two, resistance three, and then below the pivot point level, support one, support two, support three. So I'm going to share with you how to, just I'm going to talk it. I don't expect you to remember it, but I just simply want to show you that uh, how pivot point levels are created. So you will have some kind of a picture why are they important. So resistance one is being calculated by multiplying the pivot point level by two and then subtracting from it the previous day low. Support one is calculated by multiplying the pivot point level by two and then subtracting uh, the daily high for the previous day from it. And then the other levels are being calculated uh, pretty much not the same way but uh, using the same values. Again, the pivot point levels, highs and lows and resistance in the previous resistance one and resistance two and support one and support two. Now let's talk about psychological levels. What are psych psychological levels? So in Forex, psychological levels are special zones, not special, but they're zones that represent pretty much round numbers on the chart. So for example, if you have, for example, American dollar, Japanese yen Forex pair, which is currently, I believe, is being traded somewhere around 110, for example. Let's check it out. How, how much where is it being traded? Currently, is being traded at 111.13. So the biggest psychological level of the American dollar Japanese yen forex pair is the 100th level. This is a round number. Since it's a very, very round number, it creates uh, a lot of um, shift in the investors' attitudes because a lot of levels, uh, a lot of people don't believe that this level could be broken. For example, so price action 
tends to conform to round numbers. For example, since the uh, American dollar Japanese yen is currently moving in bearish direction, and it has been doing this like uh, in the past hour, uh, the pair is expected to approach like the 110 level, which is another round number. So 110 is another psychological level on the chart. And since the price is going to approach this level from above, it's going to act as a support. So 110 is a psychological support on the American dollar Japanese yen chart. And, uh, but uh, yeah, 110 is not as big as 100. 100 is like the best, the biggest psychological level on the American dollar Japanese yen for its pair. For example, when you take the Euro dollar chart, which is currently at 1.0865, for example, we know that some of the biggest psychological levels recently are the uh, 1.07 level, which is a round number, and 1.08, another big psychological level on the American dollar, uh, Euro American dollar for experience, the 1.06 level, which the price has shown to conform with a lot. So pretty much these are psychological levels. Since they are very important and they tend to pressure the price action with their support or resistance uh, functions, a breakout through a psychological level could also cause a price move, uh, a price move in the direction of the breakout. Elias says that the cable is at around 100 pips level. Uh, cable is currently at 1.29, which is pretty much yeah, at the psychological level, which the price is trying to break. But since the cable has been moving in bearish direction there is a big chance that this is simply like a correction. You never know, but we'll see. Very interesting stuff happened on the cable today since it broke its resistance at 1.27.5. 20, uh, All right, now let me switch to some examples, some breakout examples for you. This is the first breakout example we will discuss. Notice that we have a bearish trend that I've marked with the yellow bearish line on the chart. The red circle shows that the price breaks this trend line in bullish direction. And then we see a price increase. And this is pretty much how it works. The bearish trend is approached from below, which means that on the way down, the price has the bearish trend as a support. Uh, it uses it as a support, and the bearish trend has a supportive function on the price action. On the way down, we see one, two, three price swings. and the third time the price returns to that trend, it breaks it in bullish direction, which gives a signal that the price might increase. The second example shows a resistance level at the psychological level of 1.06 on the euro dollar American uh, euro dollar forex pair. Uh, yeah, and I just mentioned it as a very important level, and this is a, like a pure example of it. Notice that the price has been approaching this level on at the end of February and at the beginning of March as a resistance. We have like three or four tests over here uh, shown with the yellow lines where the price approaches the 1.07 uh, 06 level as a resistance. And since the price created a lot of pressure on this level, we saw a breakout which is shown in the red circle and the price shot up in bullish direction as a result of this reaching 1.09, which is a psychological level. As you see, the top over here, the top of the chart is the 1.09 level, which was not broken because it's a big psychological level. And maybe a lot of market players did not believe that this level could be broken. And they closed their long trades, causing the euro dollar to drop again. The third breakout example I will give you involves pivot points. This is how pivot points look like, pretty much. And this chart covers three days. It covers three and a half days, but the <laughs> you don't see like uh, April 10th. You don't see all of it over here. So this is why I say it covers only three days. So notice that uh, the white level is resistance one level. The blue level is the pivot level, the basic level. Then we have the yellow levels that are uh, starting from up to below. 
these are support one, support two, and support three levels. Notice that we also have resistance two and resistance three levels with white, but they're not visible on the chart because our chart cannot uh, pretty much uh, visualize all these levels because they take a lot of space on the chart. So this is why we don't see resistance two and resistance three. And very often, if you trade pivot points, you will not be able to see all the pivot levels on the chart. So the price starts with testing resistance one, the white level. Take a look at the white arrows as a resistance. Then the price unsuccessfully, uh, unsuccessfully attempts to break this level. It bounces twice in bearish direction. It gets supported twice by the pivot point level, the blue level, and then it breaks in bearish direction. This is a very interesting signal because, as I said, the pivot point level is the most important level. It's the, like the base of all the pivot levels. So when it got broken, this gives a signal that the price might decrease. As you see, a decrease appears afterward. The price gets supported in the support one level, the, the first yellow arrow. Take a look at it. Then it returns above the pivot point level again and creates another sharp drop to the support one level. Notice that the yellow level plays very strong role as a support over here. The price uh, decreases to this level and then it bounces up, decreases again, then it bounces up again. And then we see a second breakout in the pivot point level. This is another, a second signal that the price is really attempting to decrease. We see the second decrease to the support one level, and then we see return to the pivot point level, and the price starts a decrease. On the way down, the price tests the pivot level as a resistance, which is shown by the second two blue arrows at the right part of the chart. See that the price attempts a couple of times to break this level, but it does not man it did not manage to. The price shoots down, it breaks that support one level, which was not successfully broken in the last two attempts, and then it decreases even sharper. The follow decrease leads the price action to the next support level on the chart, which is support two. And when the price breaks this level, we see a pullback to the support two level, it turns into a resistance, and the price creates another decrease. So pretty much this situation uh, is an example how pivot points and breakouts in pivot points can signalize that the price uh, is increasing its momentum in some of the directions, in bearish or in bullish direction. In our case, the price were breaking the pivot levels in bearish direction meaning that it was going from above to below through the pivot point level giving a bearish signal. Now let's do some practical examples. Now I will sneak in my chart whoop, over here because I'm using a couple monitors. So I always have something on my second monitor and I have my chart ready to go. So what I'm going to ask you to do now guys is to suggest a forex pair you want to approach now. Do you have a forex pair in mind? For example, Euro dollar, British pound, American dollar, American dollar, Japanese yen, or maybe some kind of cross or something. You never know. Which forex pair are you willing to uh, are you willing to approach today? Tell me your suggestions. American dollar, Canadian dollar, suggested by Paul, and he was the first one. So, Jesu, we're going to leave the Euro dollar for the second part of the practical examples. Or maybe we can simply switch to the euro dollar chart afterward. So let's see if I have here it is the American dollar, Canadian dollar. Ooh, what do we have over here? On the 15 minute chart, we see a very big price increase, which has started at 1.3513, and it's currently at 1.3662, which is a ooh, it's a very big high. This is like um Hey, this like a 14 month high was created by the American dollar, Canadian dollar forex pair today, which is a very, very 
I mean significant indication that the price might be increasing. So what do we see over here? We see a couple levels over here. The first thing is that in there like at 1.35 at 1.36 area. So when I plot this line over here, I'm going to make it thicker for you. You'll be able to see it. Here it is. This line goes at 1.36 over here. Let's zoom in that chart now. Here it is. Notice that the price has tested this level, 1.36 level, a couple of times over here and over here as a resistance. Then it created a third attempt, but the price did not manage to increase that high. But we can maybe think that the price has entered for a while in the support, in the resistance zone of the 1.36 level. Since the 1.36 level is a round number, and it's a pretty round number, <laughs> 1.36, we assume that this level is a psychological level. And notice that the price conforms to this level a couple of times. Over here, and over here. Here it is. So we have a couple of times. 1.36 level resisting the price action. The price creates a bearish run afterward, very big runs. And notice that both of the bearish runs are pretty like sharp, meaning that this level is strong level. The price approaches it and then it quickly returns. But then the price started a consistent increase. And now we're seeing a breakout over here. So this means that the price might be starting an increase that could last for even longer time. But let's approach another example on this chart because here it is, our example. Because this is like a thing that has not happened yet and I'm going, I, I am really willing to show you something that has already happened on the chart. So now I'm scrolling the American dollar, Canadian dollar chart again and I'm looking for an interesting situation. What is this? This could be taken as a bearish trend. I mean, it is a bearish trend since the price tests it like two times. Uh, over here, here, over here, again here. Then the price creates a, like a sharp, sharper increase, sharper bearish, bearish impulse. And then this level gets broken in bullish direction over here. As a result, the price starts a consistent increase. Here it is. Now let's switch to another chart. Jesu set the euro dollar chart, the most traded forex pair. So I'm switching to this chart now. What do we have here? Let's zoom in. Let's zoom in and let's find some kind of an interesting example. Or you know what, I'm just going to add my pivot point indicator and we're going to approach some pivot points. So I'm going to indicators, custom, because I've downloaded it manually and I've added it to my platform, so I'll have it. Here it is. And now I have pivot points on my chart. Over here. Notice that today, The price has started the trading day above the pivot point level, the blue pivot point level. It created an increase. Hey, Rafael, I, <laughs> I can never be sure that it's not a trap. I, I'm not sure at all. It may be a trap. You never know. But uh, I mean, I'm just saying that this is a very decent signal on the American dollar, Canadian dollar chart that this breakout through the 1.36 level might appear to be something big because as I said the price is on a very uh, what was that what was that the price is at a 
a 14 month high. So this is like, uh, in my opinion, it's a very strong signal. It can always appear to be a trap, but you never know. It might turn out to be a tradable opportunity. But uh, when we continue with the webinar, I will show you how to get a better picture about identifying breakout. So let's return to the euro dollar again. Notice that the price is testing uh, is testing the pivot point level. I don't like this color. I'm going to use gray. Here it is. It's testing the pivot level as a support. Over here again. And then over here again. Suddenly, we see a breakout. The price returns to a resistance level somewhere at uh, somewhere at 1.0920 maybe. Test the resistance zone few times and then it shoots down. However, due to economic events, the price creates a big swing which causes like very very high volatility and uh, then it shoots down again as we said in the beginning uh, of the presentation uh, who said that let me scroll the chat uh, yeah there was a very big volatility on the euro dollar today so if we take the standard price move of the euro dollar we spot this bearish trend but since we had a lot of announcement today we had the European Central Bank uh, rates announced at uh, the unchanged level of zero. Uh, we had a very, very big increase and then another return to normal. And now we can say that the euro dollar is pretty much to normal. So the yellow line could be taken as the bearish result that appeared after the breakout through the blue pivot point level. Yeah, Koch, Koch mentions about the, the midpoint levels, but uh, I'm really trying to explain like the basic things because I assume that some of the people are not familiar with the pivot points. And I simply want to show how the, you know, the big levels work. And this is a very interesting ex example of how a breakout through the basic pivot point level can cause a price decrease despite of the dis big sharp move today that was caused by the economic releases. Let's approach another example. And let me delete this level now. I'm going to zoom in the chart so I'll have a better picture of how things work. Over here. This is an interesting thing. Have a look. So first we see that the euro dollar tests the basic pivot point level as a resistance. We have a test over here, second one over here, and the third one. Then the price decreased, decreases, and then it tests the pivot point level again. Notice that in the time of the test of the basic pivot point level, the price enters a consolidation, which is which resembles a triangle, or it can even be approached as a bullish flag, or a bullish pennant, I mean, or whatever chart pattern, meaning that the pair is consolidating around the basic pivot point level. This means that the price is really fighting with this level, and this level is really implementing uh, resistance functions on the price action. Suddenly, this level gets broken in bullish direction, over here and we see a consistent price increase which is a tradable opportunity then we say a return and this level acts as a support now it has been turned into a resistance to a support it supports the price action and the price creates even bigger increase over here which lasts until the end of the day so this is how pivot points work. All right, now let's continue with our presentation. I hope that these examples gave you some kind of a picture of how breakouts can be used in forex trading. And now I'm going to continue uh, 
with how these breakouts could be identified in a better way in trading. But first, I really want to talk about the size and the, the dimensions of the levels. Uh, oops, sorry about that. First, I want you to remember that the bigger the level is, the more proof you need to identify a breakout. For example, take a look at this picture over here to the right. Um, our Hira asks if the pivot point indicator is a standard indicator for uh, MetaTrader 4. Uh, no, actually, I, I haven't met this indicator like uh, from a broker that has it built in over there. But uh, my pivot point indicator, I downloaded it manually. I simply Googled the pivot point indicator, download MT4, and I found it. Then I simply put it in the folder with the indicators, and this is how I visualized it. But uh, maybe there are some brokers that are able to, to customize the indicators they have, and maybe some brokers have it, but most of them, they don't have it built in. Uh, and I hope I've answered uh, your question, Sarakira. <laughs> so the image I'm referring to, this image over here, demonstrates two bullish trend examples. In the first one, we have a small trend line, which is on the zoomed-in chart. The breakout signal appears with a candle closing below the trend line. And then you see a price decrease. But when you're approaching a bigger trend, notice that we have a, now we have a zoomed out chart, another chart, a bigger trend. We see that the price creates a breaking candle. But maybe this breaking candle is not a sufficient signal when we're talking about a bigger level. So maybe we will need more confirmation. Notice that the price creates a bottom, it returns to the already broken trend, and then it shoots down. So the point is that smaller levels don't need that much of a confirmation. The thing is that they, not they don't need that much of a confirmation, but until you confirm that breakout, you have, you have been, uh, you've missed the trading opportunity, if you know what I mean. Because uh, here, if you wait for a price, return on the first example above over here, the smaller trend. If you wait for a price return, uh, you might not even see it because as you see, the decrease consists of only four candles. And here we have a lot of candles and we have time to confirm the breakout. So you should always pay attention with the chart time frames because um, a smaller level, a small level on a big chart time frame can also become a big level on a smaller chart time frame. So for example, if you're approaching the one hour chart and you see a small trend, when you switch to the 30 minute chart or the 15 minute chart, then you will see the trend stretched, taking more space. I mean, it's pretty much going to be the same trend because you're approaching the same trend, but you have more candles over there. And more candles are sometimes needed when you want to confirm a valid breakout. And now I'm going to tell you what I'm talking about. So this is why I named my webinar one, two, three, four guides uh, to identify real breakouts in, for, in Forex. The reason for this is that I've created my own system to confirm real breakouts. And this system consists of four signs, four signals. The first one is the breaking candle. The candle. Uh, Elia has a question, and Chris has a question. Uh, hey, Chris says that he will be posting a couple of people point indicators on Facebook later, which is great. I will really appreciate if you do this, Chris. If you want, you can do it in our private Facebook group, so everyone will be able to see it. Uh, and Elia says that the only one issue with pivot point indicators in Forex is when the day starts and ends to calculate the daily pivot points. Since Forex is traded 24 hours a day. Absolutely, I mean their levels constantly change because every, uh, every set of pivot points takes indications from the previous day. So pivot points and pivot levels are pretty much a way to approach Forex pairs intraday. Intraday, because tomorrow pivot levels will be different. 
Uh, and Cox says that uh, a particular brokers have uh, their trade station has the pivot point indicator built in, which is absolutely true. All right, now let's continue with the presentation. Uh, as I said, the first sign of a real breakout is when you see the candle breaking the trend because uh, a breakout should start from somewhere, of course, and the first point is when you see a candle closing below the trend. If you have a bullish trend line, like in our sketch over here, you will need to see the candle closing below the trend. If you have a bearish trend, you will need to see the candle closing above. Then the second signal is create the creation of the edge. So if we are talking about the bullish trend, after the breakout, you are likely to see the price action creating a bottom. But if you are trading a bearish trend, this will be a top because the breakout will be bullish. And then the third step is the pullback. Very often you will see the price returning to the already broken level. And since the trend is bullish, the price is very likely to to turn the bullish trend, which has supportive functions, to turn it into a resistance and test it as a resistance. And the fourth point of my breakout system is the return to the created edge after the creation of the third signal, the pullback, and the return to the broken level. The price will very often shoot again in the direction of the breakout, and it is very likely to break the created bottom you see over here with blue, the level of the created bottom. When you see this breakout, this gives you a very strong confirmation that the price is returning. So in my opinion, this one, two, three, four uh, system to identify breakouts is a very good way to approach turning points on the chart, which is the idea behind the breakout. And now I'm going to give you like a real chart example for each of these four steps. This is the first one. We have a bullish trend over here and we see a candle closing below the yellow trend line. <coughs> After we see the candle closing below the trend line, we see the creation of the edge. In our case, this is like a small bottom over here we have the bearish candle that closed below the trend and we have a bullish candle finished that creates something like an edge on the chart i say edge because you should approach this as tops or bottoms depending on the trend you're looking at in our case we have a bullish trend and it's a bottom but when we're looking at a bearish trend the same scenario will be located above the bearish trend line and this will be a top so this is why i named this an edge so the second is the creation of the edge. Then we switch to the third image, which is the pullback. Notice that the price creates a pullback after the breaking candle, and it tests the already broken trend line as a resistance. The trend has been a support previously because the price has been conforming to the trend, but then the pullback makes the trend into a resistance. And notice here in the red rectangles, I've shown some kind of a, I've, show, I've drawn a couple sketches that will show you uh, what you can see from pullbacks in forex trading. Sometimes, uh, take a look at the at the left red rectangle. Sometimes you will see the price going above the already broken trend line, and sometimes as shown in the second rectangle, you will see the price not being able to touch the already broken trend line. And this is a normal event because levels in forex trading should not be approached as single lines, as a thin line. They should be approached as areas. And sometimes the return might go above the trend. Sometimes the price action might not even touch it. That doesn't mean that the price has not tested the trend area. The important thing is to identify that pullback you see on the real chart over here. If you identify this pullback, then you can proceed with the fourth signal that will help you identify real breakouts. This is the return and the breakout through the edge, which in our case is a bottom. So we have the price create, closing a candle below the trend. 
then we have the creation of the bottom, the edge, then we have a pullback, the trend which was a support previously turns into a resistance and send the price downward. And then we have a breaking candle through the edge, which I have marked with the red circle. This breakout is a signal that you're probably having either a big retracement on the chart or a reversal. And this is when we get the tradable opportunity. Because after the price breaks the edge and the bottom, you can short the forex pair you're trading and you can attempt to catch the bearish run that appears afterward. And now let's switch to some practical examples again where I will show you, for example, where to enter, where is a good point to enter, uh, where is a good point to exit, and I will also try to show you how to position your stop loss orders in different situations. So I'm going to bring the chart again, and I'm going to ask you uh, again to tell me a forex pair you would like to approach today. Which chart do you want to see now? We already saw the, the American dollar, Canadian dollar forex pair, and we also saw the, uh, the euro dollar forex pair. So I suggest you that we try another chart again. Simply tell me which chart do you want me to switch on, and we will proceed. All right. Uh, Cox suggested uh, euro British pound. Uh, Raphael, I just wanted to tell you that we are pretty much trying to stick only to currencies, so uh, uh, I suggest that we continue with currencies and maybe in future we might talk about gold, but uh, pretty much we're trying to to hold it around currencies because this is uh, uh, what we're trying to cover on the website. So maybe we can leave commodity and gold trading for some other webinar or for some other discussion. Uh, yeah, we can start with the Euro British pound as suggested by Koch initial, uh, uh, the initial suggestion of Koch, the Euro British pound, and then we'll switch to the American dollar Japanese yen as suggested by Raphael. So I don't have Euro British pound now, so I'm going to open my Euro terminal and I'm going to bring the chart window. Here it is. And I'm going to put my cool template because I really like to keep it black like this. Okay, so we have the Euro British Pound Forex pair. And I will try to show you what I'm talking about. Let's zoom out the chart and let's try to find the pattern I'm referring to. Here it is. I found it like a couple times now. I'm going to start with this one over here first. Here it is, a bullish trend, a bullish trend that has been tested one, two, three, four, five, more than five times. And then suddenly we see that the trend is being broken. Over here. After the breakout, the price action creates a bottom. Which I'm going to mark with blue for you. Over here. So we have first the breakout that maybe needs to be painted in red because it's a Breakout. Breakouts are red, always. <laughs> so we have the breakout. We have the creation of the bottom over here. Then we have the pullback. I'm going to zoom it in. Here is the pullback. Notice that this time the pullback goes above the trend. But as I said, this is something normal since trends need to be approached as zones and not as single lines. Here it is. As you see, many times the price simply... Uh, sometimes it goes slightly above, sometimes it goes slightly below. It's normal thing with the trend lines. We have the, the pullback, 
which I'm going to paint with a rectangle for you. This is the pullback. And then we have the return. And we have the breaking candle over here, you see? By the way, this candle is relatively big, and probably there has been some kind of an important e economic event of 15th of March, which caused this volatility over here. But the idea is clear. We see the breakout, which is like the, the short signal in this case. Here it is. And when this candle is finished, this gives us a very good short signal that the price is probably going to decrease. So in this situation, if we short the Euro British pound forex pair, we will enter somewhere over here at 0 0.8695 for example. And there are two stop loss opportunities when you trade breakouts. The first one is to place your stop loss order above the top created in the moment of the test after the breakout. So this probably sounds confusing to you, so I'll give you a hint. This is the, the third signal we're looking for on the chart. This stop over here, that was that crea was created by the pullback. You can simply put your stop loss order over here, or if you want to keep it more safe, I mean like uh, to keep your stop loss order a, a little bit looser, because uh, you want, for example, to keep it distance from the volatile price action, you can simply put it above the last top of the trend. In this case, we see that both tops are pretty close to each other, meaning that it is better to contain both tops on the chart with our stop loss order. Simply, there is not big difference between having the stop loss order over here and over here. And since you have, with a little much of an effort, contained both of the tops, I suggest that we contain both of the tops in this case. So if you place your stop loss order over here, uh, you will have your trade protected. You have the breakout. Now let's see how things develop. Notice that the price decreases further in this case. and it enters a very big bearish trend. So pretty much the signal I'm discussing now, uh, let's take a look at it on the daily chart. Ooh, I lost it. Where did it go? Uh, yeah, over here. <laughs> I lost it, yeah, here it is. So the signal I got caused this big bearish trend over here. I mean, this was the indication that the price is probably going to decrease. Now, when we look at the daily chart, we have a bigger picture about this trend. And all the signals I just mentioned are, are gone because we don't have candles. But when we switch to the four-hour chart, now we get the picture. And the one-hour one chart as well. Let's zoom out. Here it is. And this causes the big bearish trend afterward. So after this breakout, you can pretty much catch at least this move over here. And you can stay in your trade until the price, for example, breaks this trend line over here. Or if you're if you're willing to to hold the trade further, you will get even bigger gains over here because this trend continues and it is like probably being interrupted right now. So worst case scenario, in this trading situation, I assume that you can catch a price move of at least 86, 60, 86, 70. I think you, you can catch a price decrease of at least 30 pips over here. Although it takes a lot of time, this is like the worst case scenario. But if you manage to identify that the trend is not gone yet, you can simply hold further and extend your gains drastically. Because the other exit point you will be getting on the chart appears like at 0 0.8471. So now let's switch to the other chart. 
which will be the American dollar Japanese yen for experts suggested by Rafael. <laughs> we see some links over here by Kok <laughs> Seung Nyu. Uh, I'm going to open that link later to see what is it about. <laughs> yeah, interesting. Now let's switch to the American dollar Japanese yen for experts suggested by uh, by Raphael. Here it is. Let's try to identify a breakout, but this time I will try to approach something different than a trend because they're like other interesting levels, uh, different than trend lines, which also get broken sometimes. So let's try to find something like a support or a resistance level. Mm -hmm. I'm currently browsing through the chart. All right, let's try this one. We see that the American dollar Japanese yen has been decreasing over here. Suddenly, the price finds support in the level of 100 in the area, the 100 level area. As I said, this is like the biggest psychological level uh, when we refer to the American dollar Japanese yen for expert. So it is a pretty much normal event that the price did not manage to break this level. We see a bottom over here and another bottom over here. But between the two bottoms, we see a top. And this top is located somewhere at 1 point, uh, somewhere at 101.20. 101.20. Here it is. Suddenly, after the second bounce from the 100 level, the price breaks this top. And this is like a normal thing since we there is a bigger chance to see a breakout through the one through the hundred one level rather than through the big psychological hundred level. So now let's mark the breakout. We see the breakout, and this is the first signal of the breakout system I'm referring to. This is the breaking candle, the one that closed above the 101 resistance level. Then we saw the creation of a top. And that top went somewhere over here. I'm going to extend it because it took some time until the price broke it. And then we saw a return to the already broken resistance and the price approached it as a support over here. We saw a couple of tests of the already broken resistance zone and it turned into a support. Then the price shot up. It broke the already created top, which is somewhere at 101.75 nearly. And it created a strong bullish increase. So this breakout is another good signal that the price is probably reversing. So if you've entered over here at one point uh, at 101.83 you could have protected your trade by placing a stop loss order either below the bottom created after the breakout somewhere over here Or you can use the general 100, the, the general support level at 100, the big psychological support at 100. As you see, the price creates a very strong increase afterward, and we can use some price action skills over here to measure this trend. Like this, this trend appears to be one, two, three, four, five times tested, maybe. And when the price closes a candle below this trend, we can simply close our trade. And uh, in case this was traded, it would have generated something like maybe 
is from 101.83 to 103.69. So this is like 200 minus 1486 pips profit from this trading situation. And this is like a very big percentage because when we divide uh, uh, 186 pips, which is 1.86 of this forex pair, by the entry price, which was at 101.83, and then when we multiply this number by 100, we get a very big percentage profit. Oh, I messed up my calculation for some reason. I'm not sure why it happened, but I'm going to do it again. 101.83. It is uh, somewhere near somewhere near 2% profit almost in this case, which is like a very very significant very very significant amount for like um Two o'clock. Some like 40, 48 hours straight. And uh, let's see if there are more questions over here. No questions. So the point is to be able to identify the breaking candle we got over here in the first red circle. Then to be able to spot the top, to mark the top, to identify the return to the already broken level. And then at the breakout through the top you've already marked, you should use this signal to open a long trade with the American dollar Japanese yen forex pair. In our case, we see that the price action creates a decent bullish trend afterward. And then this trend gets broken, and we can use this as a closing signal. And by the way, since this trend gets broken, we get another tradable opportunity maybe. Notice that the trend gets broken over here. We see the creation of another bottom. Here it is. Then we see a perfect return to the already broken trend line, which is our fourth signal. And then we see a breakout through the edge and a decrease that follows. Notice that in this case, the decrease is not very impressive, but it's still something that might be used. Because if you enter over here, it's pretty much you're going to catch something like this candle. And uh, you can, for example, use something like a trend line, another trend line to determine your exit point. I mean, this could be a very tricky trade because the the actual big increase does uh, the actual big decrease does not appear, but that doesn't mean that the trade cannot be profitable because if you apply some more price action rules, you identify a falling wedge chart pattern over here, and you can pretty much use this candle to exit the, the trade. However, since we have the creation of this, which is something like a bearish trend, your exit point can even come, come over here, and this is your second entry point. I mean the trade can still be profitable, but is not as profitable as in this case, because the exit point comes uh, earlier, because the price does not manage to create a big reversal, and instead it is probably bouncing off some Fibonacci level maybe, and this is why I'm going to use the Fibonacci indicator to measure this. Uh, somewhere near the 23.6 Fibonacci level, which plays the role as a support. Whoops, what did I do? Yeah, here's the chart. Uh, yeah, this is pretty much. Do you like to tell me another chart so we can approach one more example? I would love to hear one more chart from you. 
for example, Australian dollar, American dollar, or maybe New Zealand dollar, American dollar, or maybe some kind of a cross. Something in mind? Feel free to suggest another chart to approach. Maybe this time I can add the pivot point indicator, maybe, or we can try to identify some other level. Uh, Euro Swiss franc, okay, suggested by Raffaello. This one I don't have here. So here it is. Chart window. I'm gonna put it in fancy black because I like black templates. Here it is. All right, let's now use some pivot points. Going to indicators, custom, here they are. And since I'm looking at the one hour chart, and the one hour chart involves a lot of one day time frames, we see that the pivot point indicators is very curved because every curve means that a new day is starting. So you see that the days are pretty much very tight, very close to each other. So I suggest that you use the pivot point indicator on a smaller chart. Maybe the 15 minute chart or the five minute chart or even the one minute chart is a very good way to. Uh, to approach the pivot point indicator. So I'm going to use the five minute chart and I'm going to zoom it out so I will be able to discover what I'm looking for. And I think I just did, but I, I lost it since the, the chart was. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but you need to, you need, Chris, you need to approach a, a different, a bigger indicator that is confirmed, uh, that is configured in a different way. In, our, in my case, I only use the standard pivot point indicator that is good basically for intraday trading since the pivot points of this indicator refer to, to a single day. Otherwise, you're right. Absolutely. And now I'm going to scroll the chart to try to find my trading example. Yeah, let's try this one over here, for example. So we have the basic pivot point, the blue level, which is the PP level, meaning pivot point. And we see that the price, and I'm going to even switch to the 15 minute chart because you'll be able to see it in a better way. The example is from uh, April 17, which is like uh, 10 days ago. So I'm going to switch to the 15 minute chart. Here it is over here. And I'm going to zoom it in. Notice that the price has been increasing. It met the pivot point, the basic pivot point as a resistance. Then we saw a breakout in the basic pivot point, somewhere over here. Then after the breakout, the price created a top. Created this top over here, which is our second signal. Then we saw uh, we saw the pullback and we see that the, the pivot point level was turned into a support over here. It turns into a support and then the price shoots up. We see a breakout through the top created after the pivot point breakout, which is our fourth signal. And we see that the price creates an increase afterward. Zooming out the chart. Then the increase continues further. The price breaks the next pivot point level, which is a very good signal that the bullish trend will probably continue. Then we see a return to the broken first resistance level. That resistance level turns into a support and the price shoots up again to the second resistance level. Uh, Rafael is asking, uh, uh, is there breakouts of support or resistance on pivot points? Pivot points are approached as a support and resistance. I mean, uh, 
the tool every level on the chart should be approached either as a support as a resistance because basically support and resistance is the base fundamental of technical analysis so whatever you're referring to like a level an indicator a tool or uh, or some kind of a chart pattern you are always using support and the resistance level terminology the reason for this is that price breaks and approaches levels as supports and as resistance. This is why I refer to these levels as support and resistance. And since the price is breaking the resistance pivot point from below above, we say that the resistance pivot point is broken as a resistance. Because although it is R1 pivot point level and it's a resistance, it turns into a support afterward over here when the price uh, tests this level as a support. After the test, again, we see a breakout through the created top over here. The price breaks that top and we see that the price action repeats the pattern again. Until over here when we see that a strong resistance appears somewhere at uh, 1.0690. We see that this level gets tested many times here, here, another candle over here, third candle over here, then another big top over here. And we see then another top, and we see that the price is hardly unable to break this level until over here. And after you see that hesitation over here and the creation of this top, maybe it's time to exit that trade. It might be good to abandon it since, since you've already got the trend. Yeah, and as you see, this pretty much applies to pivot point levels. I would like to emphasize that this strategy could be used with anything you are able to discover a breakout in. This also includes chart patterns, regular chart patterns as uh, head and shoulders, has double top, double bottom, inverted head and shoulders, rising wedge, falling wedge, triangles, uh, triple tops, triple bottoms, whatever you want, cup with handle. All, every chart pattern you can think of could be used, I mean, uh, with the breakout system we're currently discussing. But as you remember probably in the beginning of the presentation, I told you that, uh, that small levels require small breakouts, big level require big breakouts. So if you're approaching like the 100th level of the American dollar, Japanese yen, Forex pair, you would need to use that 1, 2, 3, 4 guide, 1, 2, 3, 4 system to identify a real breakout. But when we switch, for example, to which chart we have? All right, let's say Australian dollar, American dollar, Forex pair, and I'm going to go to the five-minute chart, which is a very, very, very small chart, and I'm going to zoom it in in order to be able to to demonstrate my example. All right, on the five minute chart, we see a standard bullish trend, which lasts like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 13. 13 candles times five, which is like one hour, pretty much, uh, 65, 70 minutes. Here it is, I'm gonna mark it for you. This is the trend. Notice that we don't have this pattern over here. We don't have this pattern because we don't have candles to identify this pattern. So in case you are trading a zoomed in chart and you're referring to a smaller trend that con consists of a small amount of candles, you can open your trade uh, in the time when you identify the breaking candle, which is only the first signal uh, of the breakout system. Because after you after you, uh, as you see, the breaking candle appears, and we see that the trend gets broken, and the price decreases something like with 80% of the previous trend. But when we switch to the one-minute chart, let me remember what is this 24th of April, to the one-minute chart, we pretty much manage to identify somehow the pattern I'm talking about because the breaking candle appears over here. Then we see a return, which is not as big as the, uh, I mean, the breaking candle 
here it is. Then we see ah this level. Then we see the creation of a of a bottom over here after the breakout. And then we see some kind of a pullback, which is very small, but this is don't forget that this is the one minute chart. We have a pullback and only the upper candle wick of a single candle touches the trend but it is still some kind of a signal that the trend has turned into a from a support into a resistance and then the price shoots down breaks the the already created bottom after the general breakout and then it creates a breaking candle over here and we can use this candle to short the forex pair and to catch this nice and decent bearish trend creating a very nice short trading opportunity over here to trade from for example 0 0.7564 to 0 0.7552 uh, which is pretty much uh, 12 pips a very very decent profit having in mind the time it takes which is like from 355 to 435 some like 40 minutes which is nothing uh, so pretty much this was everything I wanted to sh to to share with you about breakouts and my system I, I use uh, to identify breakouts. So I will be very happy if you have some questions for me, and I assume there are going to be a lot this time. So if you have some questions for me, I would love to answer. So feel free to ask me whatever you have in mind, so we can discuss it, uh, all of us, because. Um, I assume that this system might sound confusing sometimes to people, for example, who are approaching this for first time or who are not that uh, into trading yet or people who are like more of a beginners. So if you have any questions, I would love to, I would love to spare some time to answer all of your questions. Oh, you're very welcome, Mahmoud. It's uh, my pleasure. My pleasure to do this webinar. So it's actually my second webinar, but uh, I already like it a lot. So, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. I would love to. Uh, I would love to answer your questions about the pivot points, for example, or about the one, two, three, four breakout guide I created, or maybe about some other levels. Also. I want to I want to let you know that uh, this system could be successfully used when trading Fibonacci levels, for example, the uh... <laughs> Chris, <laughs> that is correct. Yeah. By the way, Vlad is very good in this stuff. Vlad is the guy who is more into programming and stuff. <laughs> I bet he can <laughs> he can really do this. You know what? I'm going to I'm going to now I'm going to copy <laughs> what you just said. <laughs> so <laughs> so I can show it to him <laughs> and we can assign <laughs> him to do this really. <laughs> Feel free to ask if you have questions of any kind. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it, it can also work with, with range, of course. Chris, <laughs> it works the same way as with a standard because a range can, can, uh, is con consist of a support and a resistance level where the price moves in between. So pretty much, yeah, <laughs> it's effective. Come on, guys, don't be shy. Ask your questions. I, I, I assume you have a lot. Uh, do I hold my trades overnight? Well, it depends. If I cock, if, if I'm, for example, if it's about a swing trade or a position trade, of course I hold them overnight. But uh, honestly, lately I prefer I prefer day trading and I don't hold trades overnight uh, because uh, it's like the more dynamic thing. Because when you when you approach swing trading and position trading, you should li definitely limit. The amount of trades you do, and since I'm 
pretty much involved in trading all day long. I prefer to uh, implement more trades. So currently I, I do not hold trades overnight, meaning that I'm not uh, subject to any penalty or whatever. And uh, as you've seen in my videos, maybe I am. Uh, I try to trade like. Uh, I try to keep it short in terms of time, like uh, in order to be able to shoot these videos. Because if I take a swing trade, for example, that takes, for example, one, two, three, or four months, or a position trade that could even last one year. Uh, I mean, this is pretty much impossible to shoot. I mean. Uh, of a video because uh, let's take a swing trade. If a swing trade takes a couple months and at the end it doesn't develop in the way I want it, I, I will pretty much fail and will be unable to provide, uh, for example, two or three or four videos per week. So pretty much I'm I'm not involved in holding trades overnight. Uh, Mahmoud asks a question. Uh, He says that there is a pivot point in for an hourly and four hour chart. Uh, what is the difference between? I mean, uh, hmm. I mean, as far as I know, I haven't used it, uh, but I know that the pivot point indicator there are there are some kind of modifications to it, and I assume I, I believe that some some of you guys mentioned it. There is a modification to the indicator that people are able to use it on a bigger chart. Probably it takes into consideration bigger time frames. Maybe, for example, it takes instead of a, a low, high, and close of the previous day, maybe it takes the, I say maybe because I'm not sure, maybe it takes the high, low, and the close of the previous week or the previous month. So you can approach pretty much bigger charts. And I assume that uh, since there are indicators for the hourly chart and the four hour chart, the difference between these pivot point indicators are that the amount of uh, past periods in t it takes into consideration. I hope this answers your question uh, in some way. Uh, so Chris is asking, how reliable do you find the lower time frames? In my experience, below 15 minutes chart, the price action is not so good. Uh, yeah, that could be, yeah, that could be, that it, it could be said that this is uh, true because a 15 minute charts are small charts uh, and below 15 minute charts and pretty much there is like, a, when you compare the volatility to the chart time frame, you know, price action is really crazy. But, uh, I mean, uh, you're asking how good, how reliable they can be. I mean, uh, if you implement a proper strategy and most important, a proper risk management structure where you don't risk like more than one or two percent of your bankroll in a trade, I believe that it could be pretty reliable trading smaller time frames breakouts since uh, since you're protected. That's it. After all, it's not necessary. I mean, the point in forex trading is not to be a winner every time. And I, maybe I'm <laughs> maybe I say this in every video of mine, but the point is to create more winners in terms of percentage than losers. So if you're profitable like 60% um, of the time and you're a loser like in 40% of the time, I see nothing bad in this. That's the point. Uh, Cock asks, did you use EMA, SMA, B bands, Bollinger bands as support and resistance? Of course, of course. All the time. I mean, uh, but uh, for example, the strategy I discussed, I can refer it more to 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 moving averages rather than Bollinger bands. I mean, I know that the Bollinger band indicator has a 20 period moving average in the middle, but when I use Bollinger bands indicator, I rely more on volatility. And when I see the price hitting one of the bands and the two bands getting distance from each other. You know what? I'm going to turn on my camera so you'll be able to see me. Yeah, that's me again. <laughs> Sorry that I, I turned it off. So I was talking. If I see that the price is hitting the one of the two Bollinger Bands and the two Bollinger Bands are gaining distance from each other, uh, this is the way I prefer uh, to trade it. Not to wait a breakout, but to wait for that volatility to grow 
and to see that the price is hitting one of the two bands, which will hint, will give me a hint which direction the price can go. And in terms of uh, moving averages, like simple moving average, exponential moving average, yes, this strategy can be applied, but I suggest that you apply it only for your entry point. Uh, for example, in order to identify a breakout through a big moving average, for example, use the one, two, three, four guide to identify your entry point, but stay in the trade, for example, until you see opposite signal coming from the moving average and not from the one, two, three, four price action. Because, but uh, notice that if you're trading a big moving average, you will need a bigger confirmation that the moving average is broken, right? Because you frequently see candles. Uh, that might, for example, close below a certain big moving average, but will not break if the price can be turned. So if you're using a big moving average, I assume that the system I suggest is, is pretty useful. But if you're referring to a small moving average, like for example, um, I don't know, 14 period moving average, which is like the default moving average of the MetaTrader for platform, I believe. If you're using a small moving average, there is no time to wait for the one, two, three, four confirmation because the breakout will pretty much, I mean, the moving average is too close to the price action. So breakout will appear frequently. And uh, when a breakout appears, you will simply see a sharp price. Phew. So I believe that the system is good for trading bigger moving averages in terms of entry points. But if you're referring to small moving averages, rather not. I don't think so. Better use like a, a little bit bigger moving average and simply trade crossovers, for example. <laughs> Something like this. I hope I managed to answer your question in some way. Although, otherwise, I I constantly use uh, moving averages as, uh, for support and resistance. Yeah. But uh, in terms of the breakout system we discussed, I think uh, this is what it is. And the Bollinger Band indicator. Um, the moving average of the Bollinger Band indicator, which is in the uh, in between the two bands, uh, yeah, it it works very good as a support or as a resistance. I mean, it can give you a very good hint not to exit your trade because if the price shoots the upper band and then returns for a for a test to the 20 period moving average, uh, and you see that the price is unable to break it, don't close your trade. Hold your trade until the price. For example, breaks the moving average, but don't wait for the one, two, three, four like uh, system because it's going to be like it will take a lot of time and you'll pretty much appear with losing trade. Uh, so Raphael is asking, do you do you see one break point in the British pound Japanese yen uh, one hour chart in the past three days, or it's it's forming one? All right, this question requires me to bring that chart over there so you said the uh, you're able to see my screen right I mean you're not only seeing my face I believe <laughs> uh, American dollar Japanese yen uh, no British pound Japanese yen I'm sorry uh, market watch uh, here it is, the chart, putting my favorite template black. So in past three days, you said in the past three days, so let's use the, the daily chart so I will quickly identify. Oh, that breakout over here. Are you talking about this one? Uh, yeah, this one. Well. Uh, Notice that this is a big chart, so if you want to get a better picture, I will suggest that we switch to the four-hour chart. Here it is. And now when we zoom it in, we manage to, let's, uh, when, when we zoom it out, we're able to position the trend line in a better way to contain the top over here and the top over here. And yeah, I think so. Yeah, this is what the pattern is about. But uh, I'm not sure if... Uh, because, yeah, we have the breakout over here. Here it is. We have a top created after the breakout. OK. 
Here it is. This is the top over here. Then we have a return. I'm going to zoom it in. Over here, a return, and then we have the shoot up, and the entry signal comes somewhere over here. And the price is currently still moving in bullish direction. This is considered as an entry signal, in my opinion. Notice that when the price breaks, it returns to the already broken level, and then it shoots up, and it is still shooting up. Uh, and yeah, I believe that uh, pretty much this is the pattern. We have the first breakout, the creation of the top, the return in the area of the already broken trend, and the breakout in the second circle. Yeah, pretty much I th this is what I tried to show you. So, <laughs> Rafael, <laughs> good example. <laughs> Nice observation. I would love to answer more of your questions if you have some. Feel free to ask me more stuff if you have more questions. I would love to answer. And in case you don't have any more questions, I assume that this is the end of our webinar. So what I'm going to do now is uh, to launch, um, you should see some kind of a pop-up that will give you the option to rate my webinar. Uh, here it is. And uh, I would appreciate if you will spare a second to rate my webinar. <coughs> And then, after we're done with with it, uh, I, I think five is good. Yeah, five should be good. Yeah, five is the good one, and one is low. <laughs> yeah, maybe I should I should have made this more clear. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed my webinar. Uh, I will keep making more webinars for you, and I will try to attract some more uh, guest speakers. Uh, we will keep these things going. For sure, we'll keep these things going at least once a month. Maybe if the interest grows, we will, you know, we will uh, maybe make more, or, you, you know, you never know. Uh, until then, I strongly encourage you to participate in the in the private forex group because this group is created only for us only the the hardcore members of forex bot so i encourage you to participate feel free to post your trading ideas i would love uh yes chris the private group is in facebook if you if you cannot find it in order to apply for the group feel free to send an email to support at forexbot.com and say i would like to become a member and we will instantly approve. <laughs> we will approve your request, and you will be part in the group. All right, that's very good that you're a part. Then I encourage you to participate in the group in order to be able to discuss <laughs> to discuss more. Uh, yeah, that is that is the group. That is the group indeed, because uh, this is the group only of the private members of Forex Bolt. And we're trying to make this group work because if we're all if we're all active in this group, it will definitely be a very nice social experience for every Forex trader. So guys, thank you very much for attending my webinar again. Again, I'm Damian from ForexBolt.com. Looking forward to see you on the next webinar or even on the next live Forex trading session. I'm going to upload a live Forex trading video tomorrow. And until then, I wish you a great day and happy trading. Bye, guys, and I hope you collect a lot of pips in your pocket. Have a great day.